Let us talk about something that the kids do enjoy, video games, and the application of these types of things toward teaching people your narrative. Think of it as, you know, uh, something you have an idea, a complex concept that you're trying to develop. People don't understand you, so you just make a video game about it, let people figure out how to do it. Well, uh, some of the Ron Paul supporters believe that Ron Paul's narrative is not properly understood, perhaps, uh, and so they've made Ron Paul's narrative into a video game. Video game. Take a look at this. There's a game about Ron. It's got to be awesome. So I dug out my old console favorites. I re 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 played them and tried to harness their awesomeness. And I've hooked up with Between Cathedrals to produce an awesome soundtrack. So we've got 50 plus levels designed around each of the 50 states. We've got 13 boss fights representing the 13 branches of the Federal Reserve. of other little treats and Easter eggs for libertarians. And uh, the genius in the game is that you are a little Ron Paul. You go around collecting delegates for your presidential campaign, gold for the bank, and then you ultimately have to disassemble the different branches of the Federal Reserve as you go through the, uh, the game. Um, at the very least, Imogen... I, I, I like the, the uh, concept of sort of the, the teaching through... At least it's that you people, I feel, will learn some more about a given narrative through through this type of product. I guess you could also kind of tell them lies, it's, but it's educational, it's accessible. It's actually what you did in your book very cleverly I, with well, the whole vampire. Yeah, I wish. Not, you know, not that I'm I had a video pet game yeah. or anything. Yeah. Yeah. What's very interesting about the whole Ron Paul thing, though, is that he really is sort of the President Obama of 2012. <laughs> Hope and change and everything going on. He comes up with well, the he's big the revolutionary, ideas. He's right. revolutionary, and that that sort of is the sort of sad shift that Obama is battling at the moment. He's never going to get the 66 percent of the vote from the under 30 like he did last time in because they're with this guy because they're with this guy the big the big idea guy the uh, open change guy yeah what do you think uh, would you think that uh, I, well, I, I like Mitt Romney game. be better off with a video game describing his economic plan <laughs> Make him I, don't, I don't know I think that would be an ugly video game <laughs> I like the idea that Dogs. one of the great things that Ron Paul has done is focus attention on the fact that there's an undemocratic institution which is the Federal Reserve which does control the money supply. Literally, that's its job. That's not a conspiracy thing right. to say that the Fed controls no, no. the money yeah. supply. And it has a direct effect on banking. And that when we talk about... And the, capital flows uh, globally. Yeah, about, about money, about interest rates, about banking, all this stuff. We can talk about what Congress does, what the president does, the elected branches of government, but the Federal Reserve, which is unelected, they pulled out most of the big bailouts before TARP, the AIG bailout, the Bear Stearns bailout. And after TARP, a lot of those bailouts were from the Federal Reserve. Well, the reason so 30 trillion is because 700 billion was from yeah. the Congress and the rest of it was from the Federal Reserve. I mean, that's where the money is. And so directing or the attention money printing. at the people who make money, it's not even printing. It's out of thin air. Well, it's a computer. Money. You just add some zeros. So it's even fine. if you don't agree with Ron Paul's sort of Austrian economics and a gold standard, you can at least agree we need to pay more attention to what the Federal Reserve is doing. Yeah, so. I mean, I think there obviously needs to be more accountability for the Fed. I'm not sure. I mean, just out of print air. I mean, I, I don't know where else you print it from. I mean, no, you've got to bring in the sheep and, and pull it from the cotton. <laughs> it's but not even but I, I, think, I also think... You, all you have to do is put zeros in a computer, baby. So you didn't print one it. One of the things I've always appreciated about Ron Paul's campaign is because there wasn't so much money there, uh, it left the room open for a lot of his supporters to build uh, his messaging. And that's what you're seeing here. And, you know, I, I applaud that. And I'm a fan of video games. <laughs> <laughs> we should, I mean, this would be fun to play. Yeah. We should all I should mean, get together. I, you know? I like uh, a little better graphics. I think oh, yeah. you'll win. <laughs> yeah. I know. I don't want to play I, you in a video know. game because I think you'll win this. <laughs> I, 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 like, Carney and I, I think have I a good, understand uh, Austrian economics better. Yeah, we'll see. Better, so. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. Business cycle theory. Yeah, we'll see. Mm. All my years at Bloomberg will come in handy <laughs> when I got to play Ron Paul money printing or whatever that is. I,